Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is the first Indiana Jones film not written nor directed by Steven Spielberg, therefore fan fiction. Make no mistake with the title of this video, Indy 5 is absolutely a bad movie. A good portion of the plot relies heavily you know on characters man. making stupid decisions, not to mention the depressing vibe this film gives out. This film does not feel like an Indiana Jones flick. Even in the prologue that everyone likes, there's just something off with the movie. It doesn't have the Indiana Jones spirit, and overall is not so super interesting, clearly only made to make moolah, but it could have been worse. Yes, this film does deprecate Indiana Jones a bit, like everyone feared it would, but he does actually have a couple of moments to shine. Of course, there's the opening prologue everyone loves. There's a scene where he is being taken away by bad guys in the midst of a hippie protest. He uses it to his advantage by loudly chanting along with it, causing attention to he and his captures, getting them distracted, and whack! gets away via horse. Even against oh, the character everyone feared would constantly berate Indy for no reason, he managed to win a couple arguments against her, like when he showed her and knockoff short round that Gum would absolutely be able to fix a vehicle long enough for them to get to their desired destination. Speaking of Jones! she's not the worst thing in the world. She does make fun of Indy a couple times, but admittedly it is earlier in the film where she's shown to be a flawed person herself, wanting to sell artifacts for money and shit. Honestly, the worst thing about her is that she's quirky and by that I mean modern Hollywood's definition of quirky where all the character does is say silly sounding stuff no charisma no personality not even any real punchlines to potential jokes just nonsense I refuse to re-record my lines which is still bad but I've seen worse. Oh look, a pen! Cool! She's not even the worst character in the movie. That credit goes to what's his name. I don't even remember why he's in the movie, he's just sort of there. That being said, this movie does humiliate Indy a few times. In spite having an awesome prologue, the film follows it up with Indy literally banging on his neighbor's door in his underwear to tell them to turn down that noisy music. When the film's call to adventure starts, he reacts by calling the police in a very cowardly manner. There's a scene where he gets covered it by a bunch of bugs and he freaks out over it, even though literally the first scene in the first movie establishes that he's not at all bothered by big scary bugs. The moment in the film that stood out to me the most was a scene on the boat where Indy and his crew of boat buddies are captured by the bad guys. They want Indy to read to them this ancient language to where the forbidden artifact is, and Indy just straight up says, No. So, because of course they would, the bad guys shoot and kill the ship's captain, who's played by Antonio Banderas, by the way. May you rest in peace. Gato. Then Jump! comes up with the idea of reading the bad guys a slab while secretly lighting some dynamite, which is... I should clarify that my issue isn't Jump! coming up with the escape plan. The issue really is Indy was too stupid to do that himself. I would have preferred for the both of them to cleverly think of an escape plan together, uh, teamwork style. Though that doesn't really matter because the plan wasn't that great either. Like I said, this film's plot is driven by incompetent characters. What they should have done it's just convince the bad guys that where they need to go is a trap-filled temple they could get killed in. Hell, the bad guys are stupid enough, just tell them they need to jump into where the heroes just came out of. That being the boat filled with the eels of death. That's all you have to do! But does this movie ultimately tarnish the legacy of Indiana Jones? Yes, but not in the way we all probably expected. <laughs> You see, Indy's son, uh, Sam Witwicky from the fourth movie, apparently went to the Vietnam War and got killed there. This causes Indy and Marion to become so sad they divorce, which pretty much ruins the conclusive ending of The Crystal Skull. However, the film ends, the spoilers by the way, the film ends with Jump! bringing Marion back into his life. So Indy does actually get a happy ending, even if it should have just stayed that way in the first place. And yes, they do go back in time, but the film doesn't become full stupid and make them constantly time jump to different periods of time. They only go to the Battle of Rome, stay there for a little bit, and then the film itself time skips them right out of there and the rest of the movie feels so dead inside that you honestly wish they went to more locations ultimately this movie though probably will kill the franchise due to no money is not the indie legacy tarnisher we all feared it would be it was close in several areas but no cigar really this film is just a boring timid mundane hollow sludgy useless cash grab that no one asked for however 
I find it crucial to acknowledge the good things about Indiana Jones 5. Of course, there's the prologue. I already pointed out the few moments Indy was actually awesome. The PG-13 violence wasn't dumbed down for a Disney movie, which was nice. The film establishes that Indy is afraid of eels because of how similar they are to snakes, which I thought was a little neat. That one part in Rome where Boyd Holbrook guns down a bunch of soldiers was kind of funny. I like how Indy gets a happy ending instead of being killed off. Yeah, that's about it. And I give this film the Sludge Badge. Could have been worse, but ultimately better off not existing.